Okay, I think we are on. Hey, hope I look relaxed. I took a break from table tennis the last two weeks and I must say, yeah, it did me good. Because now comes yeah, really the deciding weeks in terms of Olympic preparation. And however, at the beginning of June, yeah, there's also uh, the playoff final with my club Borussia Dusseldorf versus Saarbrücken. Yeah, against whom we have already played and won the Champions League final. But that will, yeah, I'm quite sure definitely be a close thing again. What's happening after that? I think the European Championships, they will take place in Warsaw end of June. And yeah, but it's very interesting to see whether yeah, that will be really held. I mean, here due to, due to the higher Corona numbers, yeah, at least here in Germany, we have the feeling that yeah, this could be really complicated in terms of yeah, organization and healthcare and yeah, we will see. But yeah, also the same goes for the Olympics. So um, I'm really often asked how I feel about the games taking place and I don't know. I think the, the organizing team and also the IOC, they want it to happen, but the Japanese popul population yeah, it's a little bit against it, so I think it will depend a lot on yeah, the next two to four weeks, yeah, how the numbers develop in yeah, especially Japan. But I think they they want to push it through somehow, even though it will definitely not be a yeah, normal Olympic Games. For sure, it will be totally different. I will at least prepare myself normal and yeah, very serious. Have used the free time to work on my fitness a little bit also with uh, weightlifting, strength training I made, also rehab exercises for my back, yeah, which still sometimes tell me slow down old boy. But I feel good at the moment, which yeah, keeps me very positive for the future. And I also worked on the endurance on my bicycle and my ergometer. So I've eaten up some kilometers there and also participated in some virtual races. Um, yeah. At the beginning of the week, I also started then with with the table tennis training yeah after two weeks break i'm I, i'm also really hot again and my coach Jörg Roskopf was my sparring partner at first and this week patrick franziska and jonathan Groth, they are coming here to my hometown here in the odenwald and we try to push each other a little bit yeah, the Chinese hub was cancelled and because of that we have a lot of time now to train and yeah, it's just nice to train against other players and systems yeah, every now and then. Yeah, I've also been following the European Olympic qualifiers a bit. Um, so I have it here. Yeah, there has been really some drama, but I was really happy for Alvaro Robles, who finally made it in his career. And yeah, he's practicing with us in Dusseldorf quite often. And I, I know him quite well, so he's really a good boy and he deserved it. Yeah, Panos Gionis, my buddy he made it also in the last stage so Panos all the best and see you in Tokyo hopefully yeah it has a reason why I'm wearing a, a cap today um, yeah in my free time of course I enjoyed also my great passion coffee and yeah I tested 
yeah, many beans in collaboration with my friends from Aniko Coffee Roasters and I found finally my daily espresso and this is now also avail available for purchase. Of course, I have a lot of fun to sell now my own coffee bean and I'm quite proud on it. So you can find the link in the description where to buy it and yeah. Just let me know yeah, if it's your taste and your, your honest opinion. Um, and a bean for filter coffee, which I also like to drink for, yeah, for a change and also just on the road. I'm also on it, but it's not ready and I have to find the right taste and bean. So, yeah. Um, yeah, finally, I would like to answer a few questions from you and try to, to answer it uh, as good as possible. So what we have here, I would say, let's start with, yeah, maybe Matthias. Hi, Timo. Can you tell us how you analyze your opponents to detect the weaknesses? Can you provide an example of this analysis? Thank you from Argentino, Argentina, <laughs> Argentino. Yes, Matthias. Um, first of all, I try to find a video of my opponent when I played him yeah, the last time, which means I prefer really actual videos and if I never faced my opponent before, first of all, I try to check out his serve, especially against the lefty. What is he doing? Is it more side spin, no spin? Is he doing the reverse pendulum and just not to be surprised and I concentrate as well on his receive. So when is he using maybe the banana and things like that. And yeah, finally I check his overall style. If I see yeah, any major weakness or something special in his game. But in the end, I always try a little bit to concentrate just on, on my style on on my basics that yes, they work out and I try to adapt just a few minor things and we professionals are a little bit like robots, I would say, and it's hard to change your yeah, calibration. Um, yeah, otherwise you, you get really confused, but it's yeah, still better to remember a few things, what your opponent is yeah, normally doing. Okay, let's see, maybe another one. Ben, which of your opponents on the international stage is the hardest for you to play against? Okay, Ben, yeah, good question. Of course, it's always hard to play the best Chinese players, especially Ma Long and Fan Zedong. They are yeah, a bit ahead of all others and my long is maybe a bit easier for me to beat because a lot is about the first two, three contacts. Yeah, it's not so much about the rallies. It's yeah, it's just about service return and maybe the first ball. And if I especially receive well, I always had a chance against him and I was able to, to beat him also a few times. Against Fan Sendong, it's a bit different. He's not the killer like Ma Long with these hard shots, but he's unbelievable safe. He's moving also very well. His passive game is very strong too. So it's really hard to win points against him. And I had a few chances, but never used them in the end. So it's a pity. <laughs> Okay, Nishan, hey legend, namaste. We want to see you defeat Fan Zedong at least once before you retire. May you never retire. How soon can we expect that? Ha, namaste Nishan. I would love to beat him at least once. 
and I hope I will get the chance maybe in the Olympics, maybe 2024, <laughs> if I still play there. <laughs> but yeah, I will try it again and yeah, I will never rest. Okay, the next question. Grace, Grace Wong, your video filming and editing skills seems very professional. How do you constantly improve? Hey Grace, um, hope you are well. As you all should know, Grace is really a huge fan and a great supporter of mine. So thanks a lot. And because she's yeah, also traveling around the world to yeah, cheer for me and yeah, hope to see you, hope to see her soon somewhere and yeah. Okay, let's get to your question. Yeah, as you, may, as you might know, uh, I'm a huge tech lover as well. And I invested a lot of, in yeah, hardware stuff like cameras, lightning, lighting, um, and also other things. So this helps for sure for the quality of my videos. But I like also to watch a lot of yeah, tutorials from tech YouTubers. And so I'm also thankful to them to let me know about their skills like editing, filming, color grading and so on. So, but for the yeah, more complicated videos, I get a little bit help from an editor who is a friend of mine. So it's always a lot of fun if we have a shooting day, maybe for T-Mobile web, web coach videos. So it's much more than just recording and editing alone. It's, it's a real passion of mine. And um, yeah, it's like in all things, if you have passion and discipline, you can get better in it. and. That's how I do it. Okay. Maybe another one. Brandon. Hey Timo, long time fan from Canada. Tell us what life was like growing up, how your parents motivated you, what your parents did for work and what age or moment you thought you could play table tennis for a career keep up the great content. Yeah, thanks for the questions. Uh, I would love to visit one day Canada, but un unfortunately there has never been a major tournament to be held. So, but at least when I retire one day, maybe 2024, <laughs> then I grab my family and I will come over. Yeah, to the question. Actually, it was a good life to grow up as a table tennis talented kid. So the training was, of course, a lot of effort for me and my parents because yeah, they needed to drive me yeah, to the table tennis center in my region for four to five times a week. And this costed them every day around four to five hours. and. On the weekends, they jo joined also the youth tournaments with me. So everything was just about table tennis in my family. And it was definitely also an advantage to be a single child. So they could just concentrate on, on me here, yeah? which was really time consuming. Uh, my father, he was working in a tire company called Pirelli and my mother, she was a baker, but when I was born, yeah, she stayed home and took yeah, a little bit care about me. Yeah, the final step when I realized I'm able to live as a professional sportsman was maybe, I would say, after my first season in the Bundesliga, when I was 15, 16, and yeah, I played already a good score in that year. I had already a quite good salary for that age. And just then I realized, yeah, more is maybe possible. But overall, I'm a very defensive personality and more pessimistic than optimistic. So also no idea if that's good or bad for sports. But yeah, it's like that. 
Okay, let's take the last question. Hmm. Maybe a German one. Spielst du mit Fans eher auf einem höheren Niveau, weil es mehr pusht? Oder jetzt ohne Fans, weil die letzten paar Prozent Konzentration da sind, ohne den Lärm? Okay, I just translate it quick. So, do you play on a higher level with spectators because it's more pushing? Or now without fans because it's yeah, a little bit less noisy and the concentration is a few percent better? This is hard to say. I got used to it to play yeah, in an empty hall, but yeah, already before we were used to play without nice atmosphere sometimes. Yeah, for example, in the first few rounds in smaller tournaments. But for sure, I prefer, prefer to play in yeah, big stadiums with some kind of vibe and where you get also pushed from the fans and your own adrenaline somehow and I hope it changes back yeah, to that scenario, uh, scenario quite soon and hopefully you can get back to the tables also very soon yeah, which is even more important because yeah without the amateur sport and players yeah our sport cannot survive and we professionals yeah, cannot live from it then so okay that's it for today so stay tuned on my channel don't miss out the other upcoming videos and hope you liked the new episode of Timor's news so see you soon <laughs>